many of you have had this exact same thing happen to you that Jesus talks about this morning in our gospel lesson? How many of you planted a field or a garden? Plants in a pot? Plants in a pot, maybe not so much, hopefully. Hopefully there's no weeds that come up in your potted plants. But you never know, right? We planted that garden. We had great help from from people here to come and help us plant the garden at the parsonage. And we planted really good seed. And the other day I went out there and there's a bunch of weeds growing in the garden. I was like, I didn't plant those things. What in the world are they doing growing in my garden? Right? Am I the only one that feels that way? It's like, really? I planted this good stuff here and now I've got all these things growing up in here. What am I supposed to do about that? Well, if you go out and pull them, right? You go out and you pull them. And we had some good help the other day going out and pulling weeds in the garden. And I got um, brought in to me some onions that um, accidentally got in the hand grip, right? Because when you grab hold of weeds, you have a tendency to possibly grab hold of something that shouldn't be pulled out of the ground, right? It's hard sometimes to grab down there and grab what you want to grab and not grab something else. And that's what the slaves today in our reading wanted to do. Slaves. That's an interesting word in the Bible. The word in the Greek is actually doulos. And doulos means slave, but it also means servant. You see, in our understanding and concept of slave is tarnished by our history in this country. Right? When, you, when, I, when I say the word slave to you, what do you automatically think of? Normally, we think of the slave trade in the South, right? That's what comes to mind because that's part of our history as a country, and that's what we see. But in Jesus' day, being a slave was something completely different. See, each and every one of us are slaves to Christ. We're servants of Christ. We are Christ's doulos. We are servants. And what the Master said to the servants who wanted to go out and pull the weeds out of the wheat said that you can't do that because when you do that, you're going to uproot the good fruit of the plants that I want. You're going to be worse than the enemy that's already sown the weeds there. What you're going to do is not going to be helpful. It's actually going to be more harmful than what's already been done. See, because we think that we have to rid the world of the weeds. Right? Right? It's our job as Christ's servants to get rid of the weeds in the world. We have to defend God from the weeds that are going to come into the fields and into the world and and make everything mucky and make us not understand what in the world is going on and who to follow. But we defend God kind of like you defend a lion, right? Bill McNabb said that. He talked about a, a seminary professor that he had who said that The quote was, you defend God like you defend a lion. You get out of his way. Right? You don't have to defend a lion. A lion can take care of himself. And you know what? You don't have to defend God. God can take care of himself. The biggest part that Carl Carl Rahner is a theologian that said something about this, that goes along with this. The biggest problem with Christianity is not atheist. The number one cause of atheism is... Christians, those who proclaim God with their mouths and deny Him with their lifestyle is what unbelieving world finds simply unbelievable, right? We say one thing and we do another. It's hypocrisy. One of the stories I read as I prepared for this sermon talked about a little girl who asked her father, she said, Daddy, what's hypocrisy? And he said, well, it's when you do one, say one thing and do another, right? To be a hypocrite is to say one thing and then to do something completely different. And she said... Well, Daddy, you're a hypocrite. And he said, I am not. And she said, well, Daddy, you say it's important for me to go to church and that we should go to church every week, but Daddy, you never go to church. You're a hypocrite. Right? That's the problem with this world. It's not the fact that people don't buy and believe in God. It's the fact that those of us who do say that we believe in God don't necessarily always act that way. And I'm the first one to be a problem with this. I'm not pointing fingers. If you point fingers, you point one at somebody else and you point three back at yourself, right? That's why you should never point fingers because you always point more at yourself than you do at someone else. So perhaps the best thing that we could do as slaves or servants of Christ is not try to rid the world of the weeds, 
but to try to do what God has called us to do and to live and to grow and to become the fruit that He wants us to be and let Him worry about what's going to happen in the end. You see, because the gospel would then have such power and attraction that we wouldn't have to worry about defending it. If we would just live it out the way that God told us to, we won't have to worry about defending God because everybody's going to see God for who He truly is and how He truly lives and works in our lives. You see... Because this problem that is caused in our parable this morning is not a problem that we as the slaves could ever possibly solve. Because Jesus said later in his explanation that the sower is the son of man and the field is the world. It's not the church, it's not our neighborhood, it's not any little thing that we have a part of. It is the whole world. See, we cannot possibly get rid of all sources of evil in the world. We can't even get rid of the sources of evil in our own lives, let alone those around us. The field is the world, in verse 38, and we cannot remove all evil from the world, even our own communities, even our own selves. Part of the problem in this parable is that when the plants are young, you can't even actually tell them apart. We've had several visitors to the parsonage lately, and every time somebody comes, we ask them, is that a weed or is that a flower? Because, we, you know, we living in different parts of the country, different things grow, and you don't have any clue. And I look at something and I go, is that a weed? My wife goes, is that a weed? Is that a fly? It looks very pretty, but I don't know if it's a weed or if it's a, should we pull that? Or, you know, both of them, when they're young, they look the same. They're green, they got a little few leaves on them. It's like, oh, what's that going to be when it gets bigger? You don't know. Both look the same. And we often don't have the proper sp- perspective or knowledge to determine what is good or what is bad. There's even biblical reference to this. Saul, who became Paul, was there and consented to the first martyrdom. He was there when Stephen was stoned. He held the coats. Look it up in Acts chapter 7. The Pharisees considered Jesus and his disciples to be weeds and they tried to rid the world of them. Right? Jesus didn't remove Judas from the group. Judas is the one that handed Jesus over. Jesus didn't remove Peter from the group. Peter is the one who denied him three times. Jesus didn't get rid of any of the disciples. And where were they when he was hanging on the cross? None of them were there. They all ran away, right? And if Jesus were to weed out all of the imperfections, how many of us would be left? I wouldn't, number one. Right? Because we can't remove the weeds from the wheat because once they grow up and you can tell the difference, what's happened? When you pull them apart, they're intertwined underneath the soil. So when you pull up that bad thing, the good thing is going to come right up with it. You can't possibly get rid of it. It's intertwined. They've become interlocked. They're now part of the same community, part of the same organism almost. Right? You can't remove the good without removing the bad. So what is it? Is it wheat? Is it weed? What do we do with it? And a question that I came across as I was looking at this text asked the question, is a weed a flower that's a victim of prejudice? Is a weed a flower that's a victim of prejudice? Because in Texas, the blue bonnet is a state flower, and if you touch it, you die. They kill you. No, not, not literally. But it seems to be that way, right? They have fields of blue bonnets, and people go out and take pictures of their kids in it. But when we lived in Ohio, if those kind of fields grew up along the roads, or along the, they came out with sprayers and mowers, and they sprayed that stuff, and they got rid of it. It was like a weed to them. They didn't want that kind of stuff around. So is a weed a flower that's a victim of prejudice? Does God think more of a rose than he does of crabgrass? Does God think more of a sunflower than he does a thistle? Does God think more of us because we're gathered here worshiping than he does someone who's out floating down a river or 
shopping or listening to polka music or sleeping, right? What is it? Who's right and who's wrong? The big question here comes down to is, are you wheat or are you a weed? The answer is, or yes, yeah. right, yes, you are both weed and wheat. You are both saint and sinner. You are both righteous and unrighteous. You are both sanctified and not sanctified because that's who we are. And we can't possibly remove what's going to happen. You see, because it's not up to us. It's not that time yet. It's not time for us to do the separation. It's not time for us to be the servants who think we have to go out into the field and get rid of what's bad because it's not going to help the world. We don't understand what's bad and what's good. That's for God's angels to figure out and not for us to worry about. See, it's not yet time for the harvest. We have to wait for that to happen. And we have to grow in and amongst those things around us that we think are bad knowing that we're not the ones that need to take care of this. It's not our job to do it. It's God's job. Our job is to grow and to flourish and to reach towards Him and to grow more in His love to show those around us in the world that we live in how much He loves and cares for each and every one of us. And if we can do that, then the world is going to see the love of God and be changed by Him, not by us. And He is going to take care of everything. So live in the place that you've been planted, growing in His love, living out His grace and mercy in all the world, not worrying about those around you, whether they're weed or weed, but showing them the love that God gave to you so that maybe if they are a weed, God can change them and God can keep us from going back to being a weed. He can keep us and hold us so live in that place you've been planted, living out His love in the world so that everyone can come to know who He is. Amen.